Greetings, Exiles. Welcome to my top 10 base PvP tricks for Conan Exiles. Now, if you're getting smashed by alphas, you can't maintain a base, you keep losing your thralls, this one's for you. This will help you survive and endure. And by that, you will prosper. So, stick with me and we'll get right into it. For my first tip, this one will be pretty simple, and it will be um, strengthening a door. Door has 25,000 HP, pretty basic, but what you can do is you can take placeables now, such as a furnace, which is quite cheap. It takes uh, stone and steel reinforcements, and that adds 60,000, and they'll actually break the door frame before they actually break the door. So this is a very good technique just for um, reinforcing your door when you have to leave it, stop yourself getting raided. And you can actually even start to sandwich your doors, like this. And it makes it very difficult to even get a bomb near the door. Alright. Yeah, I can place one there. Light. what kind of damage we're dealing with. Damage the frame by 63,000. The door's barely been touched. At one point of damage. And the furnace just took the brunt of it. So, yeah. You can reinforce your doors with furnaces. Now it's actually burning from the fire because uh, the furnace was absorbing We'll dismantle those two. Given the door's practically fine, the door frame's a little damaged. I'll show you this one as well, which is um, the throne, and that does quite well as well as a door blocker. So, my first tip is door blockers. And that one has 300,000. They'll destroy the frame, the door, even the foundation before they get past that. So, right, so my second tip is hide loot. Now this is your typical base cutaway and how it's structured is that um have internal pillars in a hidden room and how you'll get into it will be you'll usually be on the top it'll look like foundations all the way through some dlc pieces are fantastic for this because the ceilings look exactly the same as the foundations so that's always a good technique that you cut even if they blow the stations that you put on top of the ceilings and it's good to kind of like cover it with that i won't cover it with rugs it'd look too much like you're trying to hide the area but you break that pull down you get your loot put it away during raid time put your thralls away climb back up put the ceiling back down put the station back down and that's your hidden treasure room I've had people raid me with this one and wipe every single station, but not realize that the um, ceiling is a ceiling and not a foundation. Then they subsequently called me poor and left me alone. So, <laughs> that was quite a good one. But um, if you want to go further expensive, just to really seal the deal, you can actually just um, use a ceiling and a foundation like that and even if they're checking it then perhaps they'll be doing it for damage that's quite common to see what likely a break they won't see anything different or abnormal and uh the pillars give it some extra stability that stops it falling apart from the inside so that's one good way to hide your loot you can i mean realistically you can space the chests apart but you can stack them floor to ceiling if you like because I mean, if they're gonna find if they're gonna find a hidden room like this, they're gonna blow every chest in it. So there's not much point at all in um, expecting them, expecting it to like cost them more bombs by spreading it out. But um, yeah, keep it as small as possible as well. I mean, you could really make the room about half the size, just maybe a four by four, and stack it floor to ceiling. And then just one you can pop down through. But yeah, that's the um, hidden storage.
So my next PvP tip is Volt and Chess Spam. Now this has a, cr a tremendous amount of value even though you won't be using these Volts or Chess. The idea of it is to almost psychologically break your opponent, and make him actually weigh the cost of his raid. Because when you have like an insane amount of say empty chess, which are pretty cheap to make when you look at it. I mean they're what, 15 shaped wood and some iron reinforcements? Not exactly gonna break the bank if you're farming efficiently. So if you go and you get about a hundred of these uh, chests, which you were born probably maybe an hour tops, that's gonna be three bombs a chest, 300 bombs. Now, most people won't even have 300 bombs, but if they do, they certainly won't be happy getting a return on their investment of absolute zero. So, yeah. You keep spamming empty chests. I've had people raid me and we just had a base that was full of chests, like floor to ceiling, that we didn't use. They were just basically the floor we climb over. But uh, they just gave up eventually, because they blew about 40 chests. They realized they were getting absolutely nothing and they didn't want any of it. You can do the same thing with vaults, it's a little more expensive and harder to farm and I kind of feel, for me, they've gone out of uh, favor and fashion because they're obviously huge and you can fit like 10 more in easier locations of uh, chests than you can vaults but I think the most vaults I've had is about 126 across the um, ice sheet up in the north so that worked out pretty well. I've also had the same thing where people were hitting those, blowing them up, and they just gave up after about, I think, six. But, I mean, six is still six times 30, so that's 180 bombs. So it's pretty costly. So Vault and Chest Spam, definitely a way to go. A lot of people don't like that one, but it's the reality of PvP, so make beyond what you need. Let them waste bombs. And my next tip is on uh, temperature control. This works great if you have a hanging base or um, or any kind of area in which you wish to control. Often with a fighting pit of thralls to um, have an area, let's say just down here, where I want the enemy to come in and maybe I'm like further behind from around here firing at them as my thralls fight them in a pit. Because thralls are unaffected by heat obviously. So what you want to do is have a load of fireplaces, and fireplaces send heat both uh, up and down vertically um, to the absolute top of the map to the bottom, I guess, but well beyond. So if you just go under here, I'm getting heat stroke from the fireplaces above, and you can do this really up high under multiple layers of ceilings, and in effect to stop the heat stroke, they'll either have to blast through past the area and get free of it, or shoot arrows upwards. But it'll be a constant tick, which will be uh, very difficult for them to control, even with like um, a lot of water and the right armor and protective conditions. So it, that's a very useful one. Uh, it always comes on after server restarts, so that's good. If you build your bed, say, further back from your heat trap you can then um, run around and turn it off just by going up and pressing E on the fireplaces and then go about your normal day until raid time and then reactivate it but yeah that's a solid base defense almost like a poison tick continuously the heat stroke once uh, they get under it so you can do the same thing with glowing torches under over the ice sheet and cold areas but fireplaces are far more effective as they just output so much more heat than the glowing torches outputs cold, but um, yeah, it's very possible still. Yeah, my next tip is on equipping your thralls, specifically on temperature armor, like we did with the fireplaces. The thralls are unaffected by temperature. But an interesting thing is when you're raiding, sometimes you'll die and be unable to retrieve your own armor. Very often I've been doing this and then ended up pulling armor off the thralls from the person I'm raiding who we just killed. The one way to make this pretty much preventable is to give 
Guthrall. Cold armor for hot biomes. Using cold armor, he's unaffected, but the enemy can't pick it up off him and use it instantly if they die. So it's just another level of control. So that's it. Tip number five. My next tip, number six, is on archer placement. Now, uh, this is, can be very important. Archers are extremely strong, especially when they're leveled up and well equipped. I tend to use the dragoons that are guaranteed spawn over that direction from the um, Jebel Sark den, as they're quite high in accuracy and, like I say, guaranteed spawn. You can't dislike that. Now how I've placed them is I put them on top of the crenellations and I usually will do this kind of a build in a kind of cave base or building anywhere that I can uh, really block in the sides and top and have them usually come from one direction. Uh, then it's good to either have a kind of a door opening but even better if you can have some kind of a hatch or a pitfall where they have to fall into this pit and fight it's even better and uh, they will be getting shot from every different angle I mean this isn't even my design really I only figured this one out after um get something a little more stronger and I only figured this one out after um raiding a base and uh, it was damn near impossible to get past the archers because they had a pitfall like this. And yeah, I mean, even going out with a shield, you get shot from all different uh, different kind of angles. On some Voltaire, see how quick they go down. None of these archers are leveled. Look, it's just nowhere they can get away from the arrows. I mean, if they had dragon bone arrows, they were fully leveled, about 70 accuracy, 60 or 70. Players would just be falling down dead so quick. But yeah. Yeah, my next tip is just on raid repair materials. Have materials ready to go to be repairing at an instant. Also have patch materials. Patch materials are doors materials are walls, patch materials are foundations. You at least want probably 30 of each. You know, anything you're using, crenellations. Anything that's going to be able to fix your base very rapidly during the PvP because sealing people in is a great tactic. It takes up so many bombs of theirs because they may only have just enough bombs to get in and blow your loot. They may not be accounting for having to blow their way back out. I've been sealed in before, it happens. Definitely a strong technique. If you're good, you can uh, get in there, you can get your repairs in. A good star metal repair hammer will repair multiple things at once, you see that? Just repaired the foundation, the, uh, the doorway and the other foundation. Also, palisades are fantastic. You can use that to block, it's an extra bomb. And spike damage, if you have the lion claim, you can always just throw down well, say it's round people, and it will damage them quite badly. So, very effective. Always have your raid repair materials ready to go, and your patch repair materials, because they'll be essential when you're getting raided. I'm going to make eight and nine just quick ones because they don't need much demonstrated. It's just very basics. Have a counter attack plan. So do not have your bedroll and your bed in the same location. I mean, the amount of times people have done that I've seen is just absurd. Have it outside. It does, just put it outside even if you're making, you can only afford to make a T1 shack with like a basic weapon in there. You may be able to do more on the outside than you will be able to on the inside in some cases. Uh, it's good to have seal materials on the outside. It's... It's good to have some explosive arrows and explosive bombs. If you're getting trebucheted and you can get out of the base without being seen with a bomb and blow up the trebuchet, then you've just effectively, especially with the trebuchet build times now, just ended the raid entirely. 
Now, number nine will just be loss mitigation. This is all about not putting all your eggs into one single basket. And by that, I mean, do not store all your thralls in a single base. Do not store all your thralls in a single hidden location. Do not, you know, if you've got duplicates, it doesn't mean just keep them out displayed on the benches all the time. Just spread your stuff around and you'll be able to survive pretty much anything. It's very rare they'll be able to hit you at multiple bases, multiple times, hitting multiple hidden chests and getting all your thralls. And ultimately it's your crafting thralls which are the most important thing because that you will put most hours likely into farming. And they'll be most hardest to replace. So, you may have come to number 10, which is your escape plan. Worst case scenario, you're at your last bedroom. They're breaking through. They're a huge clan. Alpha, 10 people, all with rolls. And you basically don't have a chance. And you are just stuck in your bedroom waiting for the inevitable. But there is something you can do. Now, not every base, I understand, can fit a map room in it. Which would be lovely. You know, a pocket map room be able to escape. But you can still escape. All you have to do is, having learned the Midnight Alchemist, make a potion of midnight. So I would keep a potion of midnight and a bestial memory. Also a good idea if you have a bear thrall, have him there. But take the bestial memory, go into an encumbrance build, take your thralls. And whatever else you're planning on escaping with, then you just drink the potion of midnight. And you're whisked away to the wonderful land of the Jebel Sark dungeon. You simply will spawn here. Now, if you think they're going to be waiting for you elsewhere, you could probably hide in the dungeon. I mean, there might not be a lot of people doing that during raid time. <laughs> But uh, otherwise, you can just press E on the pool, return to the surface, and you will spawn into Setmeru, exiting the dungeon. You have effectively escaped your base with your loot. You run to a safe house, hopefully established nearby, and wait it out. So that's my top 10 PvP tips for Conan Exiles. I hope you find them helpful. Hope you like and you subscribe if you uh, enjoyed the content. Hope there'll be some more to come, and uh, good luck and survive.